Today we're testing heat and speed on the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. This is going to be the first test of three drives for heat and speed based on questions you guys have asked for. So I'm going to lay it out for you, but let's go ahead and uh, get the screen set up because this took a little bit of time to set up. Probably the, one of the most complicated videos that we've set up to do, and I'll explain it as we go through the test. Welcome to Builder Buy, everybody. I'm your host, Gil Boyd. So what you're going to see here uh, in the top right screen as I'm looking at it, we're going to have two things up. One, Crystal Disk Mark, and I'll give you the specs on that in a minute. Behind it, we're going to have the program by Sabrent running, because if you notice in the center of the screen, it says temperature. And the reason for that, this is the only program of several I've looked at that will give us temperature in real time. And I'll explain the other things we're going to have in front of us. Now, if you look to the screen right beside me right here, uh, with the Fleur camera that we talked about in the previous video, and we've also got a digital thermometer here set up. And if you'll notice in the video, and I'll point to it with the camera, because that's right over me right now, that probe right there is the thermistor that's controlling that digital thermometer. That's an NTC probe, just thermistor. And of the five ways we could test for heat, we've chosen three. And I think the one that is the most complete is going to be the one that anybody could do with the software from Sabra. But we're uh, looking at the two drives. As you'll notice here on the screen, this first drive is the uh, boot drive, which is the Seagate Fire Cuda. And the second drive that has the thermistor on it is going to be the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Now what's curious, everything is set up for centigrade or Celsius. We've got a temperature reading here from 32.9 up to 46.1. So we're reading temperature in real time and you can see where the heat's at. This does not change much on the digital thermometer. What does change is when we do the test with Crystal Disk Mark. Now, Crystal Disk Mark, set that up. It's not going to be complete apples and apples because with a one terabyte drive, you've got a one gig cache. With a two terabyte drive, you've got a two gig cache. So the cache needs to be set for the test according to the size of that cache or greater. So since this is a two terabyte drive, we'll set it up for two gig. So let's take a look here in the upper quadrant. And if you'll notice, get my mouse back. And if you notice, I've already run the test once, but I've got it set for 2 gig. I'm going to do the C drive. I've run the test once. I'm going to run it again. And as I run the test, you'll watch here in the temperature where the mouse is at. And as I run the temperature, you'll notice right here, you'll see centigrade. And it also gives Fahrenheit or Celsius. I'm, I'm used to centigrade. So. so I'm going to run the test. I've got it set for 2 gig, but it's a 2 terabyte drive. And we'll watch it in real time as that temperature changes. Now. In the screen above me, you'll notice we've got uh, two other programs running Hardware Info, which will show the temperature of the drive, but it reads a setting, but not in real time. Same thing for the program from uh, Samsung Magician. It reads a setting for the drive, but not in real time. The only one I've been able to find that reads the temperature in real time is the Sabrent Rocket software. So of the temperatures we've got, I don't see any fluctuation or I see minuscule fluctuation with the digital thermometer from the NTC probe. And I get a, a fluctuation approximation what I'm seeing on the Fleur camera uh, from 46 to 32 degrees. So anyway, the best temperature we get is coming off the Sabrent Rocket software. So this will kind of give you an idea of what everything is that's going on. Now, depending on the kind of feedback we get, because this was a question that was asked, this question was asked specifically of the Western Digital Drive, but since we finished the last test with the Sabrent Drive, that's what we started this test with. So if, what I'm saying is if you guys want to see the tests on the other two drives, watch this video. Then we'll do the other two. But if nobody watches this one, I won't bother doing the others. But i got to tell you that it took a t little bit of time to get this set up with the screens with our video switch to get all the input so you can see all this stuff in real time. But all this is happening in real time as we're watching the test. So again, this is a first generation drive we're testing right now. And the biggest difference in the first generation and second generation PCI Express 4.0 drives, around 5,000, 5,000 megabytes. Uh, when we get to the uh, second generation drives, they're around 7,000. Now, I would expect, since CES has come through, we should be seeing a third generation drive. And the third generation drive should be able to exceed that. In other words, it should double the speed of the first generation drives. We'll see. But nobody's saturated the bus yet on PCI Express 4.0. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on everything as I'm watching to make sure 
everything's copacetic. And as this test runs, we're, we're getting a good spec on it. Um, uh, one thing I've, I've, I've noticed is this drive, the Sabre drive, by default, runs at a lower temperature. And my concern has always been, whoever's reading temperature, how do they read the temperature? Are they reading it in real time? Or do they approximate temperature based on power? And from what I've seen, the other programs, I think they're looking at a spec, or else they're looking at a temperature based on power. But we're looking at temperature right now, and we see the fluctuation. So we've up to uh, 51 degrees centigrade. We're still within operating parameters. But I want to see how this test would run. I run all the programs. Some of the programs are specific to the brand of drive and won't run on other drives. Uh, for example, I like the software from Crucial, their control panel, whatever they call it. It will tell you if you're running PCI Express 4, and it'll tell you what that drive can run, which is kind of neat. The other programs don't offer that information like that. So every, every program is a little bit different. I like the Samsung Magician. In fact, if you're going to update the firmware on any one of the drives, you want to use the brand of software that goes with that drive. But again, uh, to reiterate, I wanted to run this test. Uh, we talked about the uh, FLIR thermal imaging camera. And you can see that drive, see where the heat's going. We're testing the primary drive, and you can see how it's heating up. So once we get through with the primary drive, then we'll go to what this test is really about. Because right now, to reiterate, we're testing the Seagate Fire Cuda. So we have a benchmark, and I want to wait till it finishes. But I want to explain to you kind of what all is going on. I do hear the fans kick up as we run this test to uh, compensate for whatever heat's being generated. Uh, but after a little bit, they settle back down. And I will also say, if you'll notice in the case here, as we look at uh, the bottom right quadrant, the video card we have in that second slot, excuse me, the second 16 lane slot. We've had some questions about what kind of video cards you can put in one of these machines. And uh, you have to remember, the video card we have in here is a GeForce, a, an, the video card we have is an EVGA GeForce RTX 3080. And this particular model is 2.2 lanes wide. What does that mean? 2.2 lanes wide means I can't use that last eight lane slot. So anybody that wants to put a couple of uh, 3080s in one of these, or even a couple of 3090s, because two 3090s, especially if you're doing engineering work or GIS, you'll be able to bridge them if they are two lanes wide, excuse me, if they are two slots wide, you can run the bridge, you'll be fine. But uh, most of the, uh, in fact, there's one specific RTX 3090 that is two slots wide, and it's uh, a new one that's come out by uh, Gigabyte, and it's a second generation. So whereas this is a first generation RTX 3080, the second generation is double the memory. I believe it's got 24 gigs on it. If you can get your hands on one. I'll put a link up to the specs to show you what I'm talking about. And as all this is playing out, there's some really cool stuff going on with the uh, Threadripper Pro. I'll put up some links on that as well. Just to say two things. One, Supermicro has a motherboard. We've uh, put some information up about that on Facebook, but I'll put a, a link up in the description. And the Gigabyte motherboard is real. It's reality. I'll put a link up on that as well. So the Threadripper Pro is coming. 128 PCI lanes. 7-7, seven, seven, mind you. 7 16 lane slots. I think that's just wicked. Okay, test is finished. We've run it. You can see kind of what the heat's doing. You see how that drive is really lit up. Now let's go to the real drive the test is about. So that's a 2 terabyte drive. This is still a 2 terabyte drive. So we're going to go to the D drive, and we are going to run the test. And I would expect this number that we've got, I'm going to do a screen capture of that right quick, will be uh, somewhere around 7,000. Let's see how far we get. So as we look at it, we're going to read the temperature in real time when the test starts up. And what I need to do, first thing I need to do is go to the application and say, let's look at the Sabrent rocket. And it shows 39 degrees. Now, I have seen that drive down at 31 degrees. Now that we've changed the Sabrent Rocket software to the Sabrent Rocket drive, we've got Crystal Disk Mark set for 2 gig. We're going to look at the D drive, which is what that drive is, and we're going to say, let's test. We'll see what we do. 
and we can watch in real time how that temperature is affected. Right now it says 36 degrees. When I originally started this, it was at 32, and we'll see how it fluctuates. And you can also see and watch here in real time on the FLIR camera how that changes. Now keep in mind, this digital thermometer is the thermistor that you see running across right here. And that's taped to the Sabrent drive. We tested the first drive as a benchmark. We're testing the second drive now because that's what this test is about. So we're looking at heat in three ways. A thermal imaging camera, a digital thermometer, and the software that's reading in real time. And uh, I think after watching this, everybody's going to be downloading the segment rocket. Also, these applications will show you, if you notice up here in the top left, about the uh, Sabrent Rocket uh, software. Shows also your sector size. That's important whether you're using 512 or uh, 4K. I'm not going to get into that right now, but it's, uh, it's nice to know that. So we're pumping up, and if you'll notice how that lights up, I want to I keep this video complete in its entirety so you can see how that heat is affected. And because this is on the smartphone, if something pops up, I've muted it. So if anybody calls or something pops up, it won't get in the way. But I'm not going to edit this. I want you to see all of this. Went to a lot of trouble to do this. This took a uh, took better part of a day to get this set up, e even to get this all mounted like this. So hope you guys are enjoying this. So right now on our read in megabytes, we're at 7,035. Okay. And we've sized the test according to the cache on the drive. What's nice about the Sabrent Rocket software, it will read the drive size, it reads the partitions, the sector size, firmware, serial number, drive letter, all that good stuff. And with that application, that's what I would use then to update the firmware if I chose to. Sometimes firmware updates on NVMe drives is a dicey thing. Sometimes a firmware update, don't be the first you may have the opposite effect of what you want. In other words, you may reduce performance. Now, you watch here in the camera in real time on that FLIR, you see how the heat changes. And that's what I wanted you to see in real time from the boot drive, which is the Seagate Fire Cuda, to the second drive, which is the Sabrent, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. So a first generation PCI Express 4 drive and a second generation PCI Express 4.0 drive. And hence the readings we're getting so 7,035 megabytes on the read and 6,544 megabytes on the right. I think that's respectable. But I think this is about as a complete a test as we can do that you're going to find that anyone's going to be having access to. And uh, all for you guys. So for, for the question, for the team. Now again, for those that haven't been watching our videos, the machine we're testing on, this is PCI Express 4.0. But this is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare motherboard. And uh, we think this is the best value, the best bang for the buck, because uh, you get an M.2 quad card, and you also get a uh, Thunderbolt 3 Titan Ridge card, PCI Express 3. comes with the system. And we have 256 gigs of RAM in here. I believe that's a 3970 processor, air-cooled. And it's interesting how that primary drive has just kind of cooled right down. And you can see how that other one's lit up. So temperature now reading on the Rocket Sabrent software, 56 degrees, 55 degrees. And we're pushing, that's 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, I think we could fry eggs on that. Even though it was warm and I can't get my hand in there right now, it was never too warm to touch. We are using the heat sinks that come with the motherboard. And we do have the thermal pads. Now, I have read manufacturers suggest you should replace those thermal pads about every six months. That's a great idea. And again, I'm glad the video card is over so we can see these two drives in this test. Otherwise, it would uh, obscure this view. So I think this is quite fascinating to view. And our temperature reading we're getting on the FLIR camera, the, the highest temperature is 56 degrees. And on the uh, software, which is now stopped, it's coming down to 49 degrees, and I'm still getting 55 here. So I'm getting a range in the uh, camera from 55.5 to 32.9, the hottest spot being, which is right about where the camera is pointed, at uh, 55.8. So it gives us an idea, roughly, how the heat lays out. So for those of you that want to know, 
how these drives perform based on heat, based on speed. There's, I think, the best test for the speed. And I think here are the best tests we've got. Now, I didn't mention much about the thermometer. It did jump up to 36.5. How accurate is that? This can be used in an aquarium, so the thermistor is waterproof. But uh, I think the software gives us the best reading. We're coming down to 44, and the drive is still the hot spot, but it's, um, it's, it's coming down. The reading we're getting is 52.5. So I think that pretty well sums it up. We've tested this drive. Uh, we're going to do the other two, but only if you guys watch this one, and uh, we'll see how the requests go. I would like to do them while this is set up, but I want to wait and see how feedback goes. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is Builder By. My name's Gil Boyd, and we we'll look forward to seeing you next video. We are out. <laughs> <laughs>